Chapter Thirty of Mary of Fiction. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Mary of Fiction by Mary Wollstonecraft. Chapter Thirty. Three months after, her only friend, the mother of her lost Henry, began to be alarmed at observing her altered appearance, and made her own health a pretext for travelling. These complaints roused Mary out of her torpid state. She imagined a new duty now forced her to exert herself a duty love made sacred. They went to Bath, from that to Bristol, but the latter place they quickly left, the sight of the sick that resort there, they neither of them could bear. From Bristol they flew to Southampton. The road was pleasant, yet Mary shut her eyes, or if they were open, green fields and commons passed in quick succession, and left no more traces behind than if they had been waves of the sea. Some time after they were settled at Southampton, they met the man who took so much notice of Mary soon after her return to England. He renewed his acquaintance. He was really interested in her fate, as he had heard her uncommon story. Besides, he knew her husband, knew him to be a good-natured, weak man. He saw him soon after his arrival in his native country, and prevented his hastening to inquire into the reasons of Mary's strange conduct. He desired him not to be too precipitate if he ever wished to possess an invaluable treasure. He was guided by him and allowed him to follow Mary to Southampton, and speak first to her friend. This friend determined to trust to her native strength of mind, and informed her of the circumstance, but she overrated it. Mary was not able, for a few days after the intelligence, to fix on the mode of conduct she ought now to pursue. But at last she conquered her disgust, and wrote her husband an account of what had passed since she had dropped his correspondence. He came in person to answer the letter. Mary fainted when he approached her unexpectedly. Her disgust returned with additional force, in spite of previous reasonings, whenever he appeared. Yet she was prevailed on to promise to live with him. If he would permit her to pass one year travelling from place to place, he was not to accompany her. The time too quickly elapsed, and she gave him her hand. The struggle was almost more than she could endure. She tried to appear calm, time mellowed her grief, and mitigated her torments. But when her husband would take her hand, or mention anything like love, she would instantly feel a sickness, a faintness at her heart, and wish involuntarily that the earth would open and swallow her. End of chapter 30